you asked me before about um how how i have i've tried to get some of these ideas in, into into my teaching and specifically not necessarily not necessarily with commercial style playing but you know people who are, who are going through a more uh, traditional or classical approach and my argument for for tongue on the lips other than I can describe the many ways that I think it's beneficial overall for anyone, TC or not. Um, but for anybody um, who, who wants to experiment, the, the number one thing for me is the immediacy of the attack. Um, I, I actually suffered from, I think I heard someone on, the, on this same podcast saying embouchure fatigue syndrome a few, a few weeks back. Um, you know, I, I, when I was at college, I was just playing so much all the time and um, in a more traditional way, you know, and, you know, I got, I got on pretty well using the, the no method pressure. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there was a lot of lip stretching. There was a lot of lip swelling and big mouth pieces. And uh, my tuning slide was about an inch further out than you'd want it to be because mm -hmm. I played so sharp all the time as a result of all, all these issues, you know. And, um, and one of the things that I found is that o over time, my, um, my note production was getting worse. I would go to play and it, you can imagine the opening to Marla's Fifth Symphony, da -da 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 -da, and it was like, and it's just, there's just nothing there. And we went down, my teacher and I, we went, you know, he was very well versed in a lot of, a lot of different methods. And we went, down the uh, air attacks route and, and, you know, he was quite into James Stamp and, and this sort of thing. And I, I don't think that any of it was really solving the problem. And that's not, like you said, it's not to say that it doesn't work brilliantly for, for a lot of people. But for me, this idea of just, just spit to get the note to come out and it just pops like that. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's all of a sudden, Oh, if, if all I need to do to make a note come out is then everything else is easier <laughs> because I think that a lot of effort is wasted in that initial, um, uh, impulse, if you like. Um, in, in fact, it was, I think it was Mary Franquin, the, the successor to Arben at the Paris Conservatoire, um, who devoted quite a significant portion of his book to. Um, I don't know what the word he would have used was, you know, obviously in French, I think it was emissions, you know, it looks like emissions very literally, but it's mm -hmm. obviously a, not an English word. And it would, it would be exercises where you, um, you have a crotchet or sorry, a, a quarter note on the first, first beat of a, of a four, four bar. Um, and you're supposed to play that note, put the trumpet down, pick it up, play the next note, put it down, pick it up. And it's just that repeated. <laughs> just repeatedly the same every time just getting that that attack that clarity of tone to, to leap from the instrument immediately when you wanted to and um yeah so that fixed a lot of issues that i was having with my playing and i have used that i same idea to help a lot of people that i've taught over the years mm -hmm. so regardless of if they end up going down the tce path I think that just having this in your in your toolkit is immensely useful. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, because when you think about it, uh, the first thing that came to mind for me was inertia. All right, so uh, yeah. you know, the, you know, the law of inertia that you know an object at rest tends to stay at rest, object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. And right. understanding that, uh, you know, from a physics perspective, that it takes more energy to get something to start than it does to maintain it. And I think when, when, um, when we have inconsistency with uh, the initiation of sound, uh, whether it be in a phrase or my God, the, like when the, when the first note that comes out of your horn is, is squirrely, then it sets up a chain reaction uh, <laughs> that, that's psychological. So you, you, start, you start freaking out and then you start doing things to adjust and then suddenly you find yourself completely falling apart if yeah. the first note speaks and it's where you want it to be it, it's how you want it to be then it puts you in that positive state of mind so then everything starts to work easier because you're no longer fighting against yourself 
Yeah, one of the things that really, um, really actually sold TCE to me, and it's so trivial, but you know, when you're on a job, these things matter. I was, I used to play in this band, and we used to play nine to five. I think that's is that Dolly Parton song, right? Yeah, and you know that note in, in at least I think in the key that we sang it, uh, played it in was a, a high C sharp on a B flat trumpet. So, working nine to five, boop. <laughs> I nearly quit the trumpet over that note. Honestly, it was. I used to come out. Uh, that would ruin a night for me. I would go out and I'd be playing, the, you know, play a gig, and everything was going well, and this tune would come up, and I'd be like, "This is it. <laughs> this is." You know, and night after night, I'd be like, all right, I'm giving up. I'm quitting. I can't take this anymore because <laughs> it's just one note and it was just spiap every time. Um, but yeah, just because it, it's something I hadn't mastered at that point And it was, oh. I, yeah. was I was, I struggled a lot from, from trying to play, trying to be perfect all the time um, as well, which, you know, uh, that can, you know, that can really mess up any player, I think, because <laughs> uh, you'll never get there. <laughs> no, 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 that is absolutely true. It's, that's true in everything in life, you know, yeah. perfection, you know, it, it actually, there's, there's a really interesting concept of, of perfection and it's kind of a duality. It's that the, the concept of, that we have a perfection is an illusion. You know, it, it, things will never be perfect based on, on what our idea of perfection is. But at every moment, you're absolutely perfect. And the idea with that is, is that if you're playing, so if we, if we apply it in the terms of music, um, you know, those, those cracked C sharps, uh, in my case, it's, it's like D's and E's. Uh, there are a couple of songs that I have to play that, you know, it's just like popping out E's, boom, boom, boom. And, uh, you know, my performance on that is perfect. It may not be perfect in the fact that I hit it every time, but it's perfect because of, Everything that I'm doing, everything that I've done up to this point, I can't do it any other way. No. So that is perfection. That it's just it's it's that the absolute best that I that can be done with those things. If I want it to be different, then I have to start changing actions. I have to change what I practice, yeah. I have to change how I practice, I have to change, yeah. you know, maybe change my obvious or change my gear, whatever. But it will always be perfect. You know, you can't expect things to be. You know, if, if you're doing the wrong stuff at the beginning, you can't expect the end result to be anything other than what it is. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of, to me, that's kind of an interesting concept when people start talking about perfection. So I just yeah. wanted to throw that in. Yeah.